and welcome to another episode of Full Bar. In today's video, I want to talk about a new feature from Step Functions called Intrinsic Functions. Step Functions are awesome. They are becoming more and more powerful as time goes by. They are very scalable and don't have cold starts. That's why nowadays I'm trying to build as much as I can using step functions instead of relying on Lambda. And as my colleague Ben Smith says, it's a step functions first mentality. And I think that's really great. Now with the integration from step functions to over, I don't know, 200 AWS services using APIs and the intrinsic functions, you can really do a lot without relying on Lambda. This is why I think you should use step functions always when you're building your application, or at least you should start with a step functions workflow. Traditionally at AWS, when we talk about getting into the kind of serverless architecture, you'll normally hear people say, start with a Lambda function, understand the event-driven model, understand the Lambda event handler, then introduce another service for state, maybe S3 or DynamoDB. Use the SDK to interact with DynamoDB. Then maybe add API gateway so you have a front door to your business logic. And then add messaging with SNS, maybe queuing with SQS, maybe EventBridge, and so on and so forth. And then you'll hear people say, and then when you know all of that, put them together in a workflow and orchestrate them somehow. I say come at it from the other way around. Start with a step functions workflow and start dragging in your actions as you build. It makes more sense. So what are intrinsic functions and why they are so cool? Basically, these functions allows you to run directly on your state machine some simple processing. So basically, instead of relying on Lambda or Fargate or whatever glue code you want to have in place, to do some simple processing, you will do it straight from your state machine. That means that you save cost because you don't need to call these functions or these pieces of code. And then you might save transitions, you might save execution time, and all these reduce cost and complexity in your application. So basically you can have multiple kinds of intrinsic functions. So we can go to the documentation and see some examples. So I will leave the link in the description, but here are the intrinsic functions that are available. We have intrinsic functions for array manipulation, meaning that you can convert something into an array or you can partition an array as you need to, or you can check if an array contains something or get a piece of an array. <laughs> All these things are really powerful. Get an item from an array, find the length of an array. All these operations you do all the time. And then you can encode and decode data, basically base64, so you have data coming in base64 format, you can encode it or decode it to send it to the right place. You can create hash calculations. This is very common and you, we used to do Lambda a lot with that. So now you can do SHA-1 or MD5 and all that is built in the state machine. You can do JSON manipulation, so merge JSON, convert JSONs into strings and back. We can do some simple math operations like get a random number, very handy or do some sums like one, two, equal three. You can do that. You can operate over strings, so you can split strings, very handy. Or you can generate an UID, meaning a unique identifier. We do that a lot with Lambda, and now we can get it here. So for example, if you want to store an item into Dynamo, you might need a unique primary key. You can use this one. <laughs> And then you can do some basic formatting. All of this is really cool because the, the interesting thing from these intrinsic functions is not that you just use one, is that you can basically mix and match and you can nest up to 10 levels down. So you can have, it can be very powerful. The downside is that it's not the most readable format and it's not very easy to debug, but you're saving some code and some glue information there. So if you want to use intrinsic function, basically you just write states, the name of the that you want to use, 
and you need to have this key, for example, the name of the attribute dot and the dollar sign in order to use it. So that's something, this is more or less the format that you need to have in order to use these intrinsic functions. So let me show you a demo to see this more in practice because there is a lot of things that you can do besides generating hashes and UIDD. So I have this problem. I wanted, and this comes from my distributed map video that I launched last week. So if you have not watched it, go on and check it out. But basically I wanted to have a dynamo table where I will add items with this date format, basically the year and the month. And this date format came from the day that I'm recording this information. So I have the date, but it comes like in a timestamp version. So you have the date, it has the year, it has the day, it has the time, it has a lot of information. And I don't want that information, it's too much. I just want the year and the month and I want it in that format so I can sort it, I can search for it and everything is happy, happy, joy, joy. So how I build this without relying on a Lambda function, because I don't want to use a Lambda function for this. So let's check the code. I will leave you the code in the um, description and you will find it in the child state machine. You will see the code and let's put world wrap because this is quite long. <laughs> so you will see this in the add monthly metrics function state in my step function, that child step state machine. And you will see here that I'm going to put this item into Dynamo using this SDK call, this API call, putting it into the metrics table. And I want to have this as my primary key year month. So this is the formatting I'm using. I know it looks horrible, but just bear with me to find out how cool is this. So you can see that I'm getting this information from the enter time and this is a context property from my state machine so let's go to the state machine and see what is going on so this is the state that is doing that process so let's see how it goes so i mentioned that here we have the enter time and this is part of the context object of the state machine so if we go to the documentation we can check what is in there so this is an example of the enter time. So it looks something like this. So we have the year, the month, the day, then there is a T for the time, the hour, the minute, the blah, blah, blah. So I want to decompose this into year and month. So let's look at what I'm doing. I grab that date in this basic format basically date, T and time. This is coming from the context object of the state machine. So the first thing we are going to do is to split this string into two parts, the first bit and then the second bit. So you can see it here, split by the T. And I'm doing this thing twice. Basically, I will repeat first the thing for the year and then the same exact thing for the months. So you can see it here for the year, and then you can see more or less the same thing for the months here. So the first thing I'm going to split the string on the T level, and then I'm going to get the first bit, the zero bit. Then I'm going to split that string that is basically this bit on the dash level. So here I'm going to split on the dash, and then I'm going to get the first bit. And that's the ear. Basically, I just grab this bit. So then I'm going to do exactly the same, but instead of when I parse this bit, instead of getting the zero, I will get the one and I will get that one here. And then I build the format 2022, 12. And in that way, I get this format. So you can see that it's kind of to read. It took me a while to remember how I wrote this. It's not the most friendly one, but it saves you to use a Lambda functions, for example, to perform this. And after you become familiar with the intrinsic functions, it's not that hard to read. And let's say this is one is a hard one because there is so many moving parts, but it's really cool because now I can build these applications. I don't need to rely on a function. 
I can do everything as much as I can on the state machine, save costs, save time, save complexity on having multiple moving parts because there is less concurrency, less throughput, less whatever to worry about when you have less components. So I really like these intrinsic functions and I'm starting to use them a lot. So I recommend you to go to the documentation of the intrinsic functions and start looking at the ones that are available. There is so many available. One important thing to have in mind is that you can only use these ones on the task level. So it's not something that you can do in other types of states, but tasks are the ones that we are using to, for example, to call Dynamo or to call other services. So still is very powerful. So I would recommend you check these ones out and get familiar with them so you can get starting to use them. And that's it for me today. I hope you liked this video. And if you want to know more about step functions, I have a full playlist with a lot of details on it. And I have a video on distributed map, a feature that was launched a few weeks ago. So you can go and learn that one. It's in the description box and in the screen. So I see you in the next episode of Ubar. Ta -ta!